point and okay. maybe a little bit in the black point area, but okay. mostly pine point. Well, that's good. So that's good for walking. <coughs> you won't have to... Well, it's convenient when I'm down at the beach anyways. Mm -hmm. I could sneak out there and not be too far. How about you? I'm doing um, Pleasant Hill, so mine is like very saturated. So I think I'm going to try and go out this Saturday before we head up, maybe for like three or four hours, and I think I could probably get most of A them. A chunk of it. Yeah. I haven't looked through the list. Hey, how are you? How are you? You don't have a name tag. I, I don't want one. <laughs> Do you have one? Uh, I, I have just it not out. on my desk, but, um...
but it will be okay. live. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. So we're on the air. Uh, uh, Gav? <laughs> okay, good afternoon. Uh, today is Wednesday, July 14th, and this is the 4 o'clock Rules and Policy Committee meeting combined with the Town Council Finance Committee meeting. Uh, the first order, item on the agenda is, uh, well, we don't have a tennis to elect a, a chairman. And we had uh, our chair resigned uh, in the past couple of weeks, Betsy Gleistein. So we need to, uh, amongst the committee, appoint a new chairman. And I would like to nominate Jonathan Anderson. And chair of Rules and Policy. I will second that. Uh, uh, Tom, would you mind helping us? Call the uh, I guess, first, are there any other nominations, just to make sure we've exhausted? Hearing none, I would uh, say you could call a vote. Okay. Uh, John Anderson? Yes. Councilor Johnson? Yes. And I'm a yes. Motion passes. Hand the gavel. Would you like to switch? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And nameplates. Oh, I just, okay. <laughs> Do I have to hit the gavel first? Yes. Okay. Just because it's fun. Just because you can. <laughs> official gavel hit. The next <laughs> item up is for discussion the remote po meeting policy. Tom, do you want to talk yeah, a little bit? Yeah, I'll just give a little bit of background. Um, as the council's aware, the committee's aware, uh, the council's been meeting for the better part of a year, over a year, under the guidance through the governor's executive order, which uh, has allowed uh, public bodies to meet uh, remotely in view of the pandemic situation. Uh, that executive order runs out technically at the end of this month, June 2021. Uh, and it actually extends 30 days beyond that, so technically it's through <coughs> July of this year. Um, thankfully, the, in the last most recent legislative session, the legislature did pass a new law which actually does provide for this ability going forward. And I, I think uh, hopefully you all appreciate kind of the value and kind of the benefits. This is, if there's any silver lining, um, you know, from the town's perspective through the whole pandemic is that I think we've uh, provided additional opportunities not only for participants, but more importantly for public to view and participate in your proceedings. And it only makes sense to find a way to preserve that going forward. Uh, having said that, the legislature essentially provided enabling legislation which requires uh, municipalities, more importantly, public bodies, to pass policies that kind of dictate the real particulars of how that remote access and participation will happen. And with that, they gave some fairly clear guidance. So I've put together a policy that uh, does follow suit with uh, you know, much of the guidance and standards uh, laid out in the enabling legislation. It also was uh, essentially produced by our legal counsel who has a number of municipal clients. He kind of did generically and provided it wholesale to us. We have made a couple of modifications here, uh, and I'm certainly pleased to go through this, but the, the big takeaway, there's two of them I would say, one, uh, the expectation is those members of the public body, the committee in this case, or the council and others, uh, the, the expectation is, uh, is in-person attendance. Uh, remote attendance is really the exception to the rule, is the way I'd characterize it. And the law uh, lays out what the circumstances uh, are that would permit uh, remote participation, and this policy mirrors those same sort of provisions. Um, and essentially it's, uh, the existence of an emergency or, or urgent situation that requires the full council to meet remotely, a la pandemic. I can't think of too many other circumstances. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a snow event uh, that came to mind that uh, we could have an extreme snow event that it's safer for us to stay at home. Uh, or the, number two is the more likely event when individuals of the council, either illness or other, uh, for other physical condition or reason, uh, there's a temporary absence where traveling to the meeting would cause the member um, you know, significant difficulty to attend in person. So again, we would expect that would be fairly seldom, uh, but I think vacations and the like are certainly appropriate that they would attend, but for the fact they aren't physically able to. Um, so I guess the other thing I would say uh, is that under the purpose section, we have a number of exceptions. Um, Obviously, the, the Board of Education needs to do its own thing, decide for itself, uh, and I suspect they will. I think they have uh, similar interest. Similarly, the Sanitary District is a separate entity unto themselves. Uh, and then it uh, goes into 
uh, staff or committee work sessions and pre-employment interviews just to make clear that those are kind of out of bounds for this sort of remote participation. Um, the final piece is, uh, and I just learned this kind of as I was putting the finishing touches on this, the council cannot by policy or decree dictate what your even subservient committees do. They need to take affirmative action on their own to adopt a policy. This policy sets the expectation that they will follow suit, and I suspect they will. I don't think they're going to be creating a new policy. So I'll be working with staff to, to bring this matter up as committees um, you know, meet again and so certainly be encouraging a very similar policy that they adhere to as well. So each committee in town needs to adopt their own That's correct. policy. <laughs> that's correct. And that's because of the state requirement? The way the state law is written? That's the way our legal counsel reads the state law. Um, the state law really speaks specifically to the elected legislative, legislative bodies, uh, but of course we know we have all sorts of other committees that meet in public and have them in public. And so, again, I don't, it's a little chore up front, but I don't expect it's going to be a, a big hardship. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the final piece I'd say, and, and Chairman Johnson uh, you know, said this quite a few times, uh, the two things that are abundantly clear uh, beyond this is um, streaming live on YouTube, I think, is something that uh, will continue. It, I think it's been well received. It also provides a very convenient archive capability and search capability. Uh, and secondly, uh, the public's right to participate in your proceedings. I think, uh, you know, regardless of this law and policy, um, really is something that we could never go back, go back and, and turn away from. I think the public has really come accustomed to it and appreciative mm -hmm. of the opportunity to connect at the convenience of their couch, we'll say. Sorry. So will everything go to hybrid, I guess? I'm thinking about this meeting as an example. Mm -hmm. where We're <coughs> broadcasting it and taping it, but it's not going to YouTube. Uh, do we have the, I guess, infrastructure set up to... to well, and, and what's uh, the portal terminal in front of uh, Chairman Johnson there? That's our uh, attempt to simplify and routinize uh, the hybrid approach. So it would be our hope and expectation. I think in all cases where committees are supported by staff, we'll be able to run a full hybrid meeting. Mm -hmm. There may be some limitations with some of the smaller or lesser committees uh, where they're simply not able to, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, but I think the majority of them will be hybrid. Good. Yeah. So how, do, how does this, like just thinking of like the downtown committee as an example, so will that one now have to move to being in person, or can they continue to do what they do until they adopt a policy? I think they should be adopting a policy sooner than later. That okay. would be the recommendation kind of across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The end of the month. Yeah. Basically, by the end of July, everybody right. needs to have needs their to be own. in person. Yeah. Okay. Now, you, you could argue, well, yeah. So I think there'll be some stragglers, let's face it. Yeah. Um, but we'll be very clear in this transition, and we're not alone. Everyone else is kind of scrambling to do the same sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm confident we'll get there sooner than later, probably by the end of August. I think we'll get everyone transitioned. So prior, prior to this, there were some tweaks, I think, that we discussed at the last rules and policy meeting that was kind of similar. Or yeah, I wasn't at that, so, so I beg your pardon. Let's, do you want to review those? I don't remember the, exactly. There were minutes circulated, which I think capture the conversation. Do you, yes. those went up today? Um, which we need to approve the minutes as well. Okay. For Tody. And Liam, you were there. I, I don't mean I to put you on the spot, it, but I, I can't. Yeah. I, I think that, the, if I recall, the, the conversation oh, at the last yeah. rules and policies meeting was um, pertaining to uh, the requirement right. to broadcast. I think the charter stipulated that uh, there were three committees that. Well, I think there's there are two things. One, there was the relationship between the council rules and policies manual and then the rules and policies manual so that they're all out of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a suggestion by Councilor Weistein that um, all boards and committees reflected in the charter should be broadcast, and that should be an expectation that we have. Um, I think there's also some discussion around uh, where to capture that expectation. Again, I think that. was just clarifying, I think there's a suggestion we should clarify the language that only applies to the council committees, and then the broadcast language for all the council committees to be 
So I, I know that there's also some discussion regarding field trips. I was well, just going to say, I think this committee, uh, chapter 302, is where all those requirements reside. I think that's fair game for this committee to look at. Uh, I don't know that it has direct implications on this policy per se, but I think it touches it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, there are some charter requirements uh, that speak to the same sort of issues, and that's going to be coming up. Refreshing the notes, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think they, yeah. Three hundred two A was where we just spoke about codifying the expectation that there be a broadcast of certain potential requirements for certain information. Yeah. Charter, everything else are just strong suggestions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when possible. Okay. But this will be a separate standalone policy, is what you're envisioning? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a requirement under the statute. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> So slightly outside the scope of the policy, but for instance, since we're using today as an example, moving forward, would we would we still something like this? Would we be firing up Zoom and simultaneously? Ideally. Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, so. Yeah, when, when we're talking about hybrid approach, you'd be uh, technically running a Zoom meeting, Zoom webinar. And live on and live on YouTube versus live just YouTube. dumping it into onto that YouTube. Makes it easier, yeah, okay. yeah, it does. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that. Yeah. And setting well, and setting up the meeting. Okay. Right now, you're the only one who knows how to do it. Right, right I guess so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I played with the computer I, before. I can train anybody that wants yeah. it. It's nice and easy. So. So, any any specific questions for Tom on the policy, or any concerns? I didn't have any concerns with it, it as read. It, it, I felt like the state law was probably a little more specific than I had hoped for, but um, it, our policy kind of follows that to the minimum, um, which mm -hmm. I thought was fine. It was good. Paul, any concerns? No, none. Okay, no. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have any either. So, is the next step? Does this need to go in front of the council? Yeah, it's to get... scheduled for action on the twenty-first. Okay. Next meeting next week. Uh, the other point I just. Uh, just occurred to me uh, on the back 5B is a section I added at the last minute. I just want to make sure we touched on that and we concur. This is uh, the subject members of the public for Instagram. And B says it is the intention of the town council to allow members of the public to participate remotely in all public proceedings when technology and circumstances permit such participation. So uh, there may be rare occasions where technology permits or I don't know that we can't, but the intention is. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I, I, the language is not, doesn't hold us to abs, an absolute in that case, which I think is smart because right. we all, we've all experienced what yeah. does happen or can happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so that, so by definition, really, it is the hybrid approach. Yeah. You need to have the Zoom platform as the underlying platform for the meeting. All right. And do we do we need to motion to Please. recommend this? Does anybody want to offer I, up a motion? Sure. I, I move that we uh, recommend adoption of this uh, remote participation policy to the town council. And I'll second. All right. I, I'll call the vote. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Uh, Councillor Clucci? Yes. <laughs> Councillor Anderson? Yes. All right. Passes. Um, before we move on to item three for public comment, I think we do need to um, add an additional item to the agenda to uh, approve the minutes from the 310 and the 69 rules and policy meeting. So move. I think you have to second it because I wasn't here. Yep. Yeah. Can can we approve them? I think that so that actually was really to add a key down to the motion to actually adopt the oh. I move that we adopt the uh, or approve the minutes of March 10th and June 9th rules and policy. I second. So we need to call a vote. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Councilor Coochie? Yes. Chairman Johnson? I think I have to abstain, so I'll abstain. Okay. Yep. Yes. For me? <laughs> Great. On the minutes? I, can't. I thought if you had to be there. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm here now. That's okay. true. Kind of. <laughs> Good, thank you.
can we approve them with just the two of us that were yep. there? Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's let's vote to um, approve the minutes. Councillor Clucci. Yes. And I approve. Yes. So motion passes. Uh, there's no public comment. So moving on. Um, we're not adjourning, right? Because we're just moving on to. Well, we're adjourning this meeting. Okay. Yeah, adjourn this one and we'll start it up. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second. Uh, yep. Chairman Johnson. Second. Councilor yes. Cucci. Yes. Yep. yes. Adjourn. Moving on to finance. Okay. Do we want to stop the to one? let the video <coughs> stop so you can? And stop the video for YouTube purposes yeah, so we'll be two different videos. <laughs> 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 My, my, my first time having to do that, so I'm like, I don't know what to do. Well done. <laughs> well, the vo you know the voice the voice voting is a is a is a, oh. is a pandemic thing. Right? Oh, so we can just say we always just, just yeah, right. ah, there we go. But so I haven't had to do that yet. Look around. So that's right. <laughs>